another day another museum welcome back to my channel welcome back to Shay explores daily today I've got another video for you another museum I'm at the science museum behind me before if some of you remember I did the National History Museum and I'm now doing the Science Museum which is right next door to it so some cool things that I want to show you in the meantime don't forget to like comment share and subscribe I've got many 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 cool cool content coming for you guys in a bit let's go quick bit of history the museum behind me was opened in 1909 and it, you're gonna see a huge amount of exhibitions um, on many many cool inventions such as things like vehicles and many other things as well I have actually been in here before but it's many many years ago so I'm very very excited to see what's in there now let's go and have a look walk with me let's go so guys we start the video here in what they call the energy hall so the energy hall relates obviously to anything to do with energy but a lot of this stuff in here relates to steam power which became prominent during the Victorian era so let's have a look around and see what's here when you talk about the industrial revolution you cannot talk about the industrial revolution without talking about this man behind me Mr James Watt one of Britain's great designers of the actual industrial revolution a lot of the steam power trains and engines were actually his designs whilst he was a controversial person for his views on other things as well a lot of the engineering and innovation that we have today came from his ideas which are all on display in this museum so car engines um, steam powered trains um, like energy to heat up your homes etc a lot of the ideas and principles would have came from this man um, behind me so here we've got another one of his cool inventions so this is a water wheel so essentially back in the day uh, water used to have to travel downstream uh, people used to rely on water traveling downstream and coming up the river to get water sources what happened on a day in which the water there was a drought this machine here and these kind of machines here what they used to do is they used to keep water uh, recycling and circling so that people wouldn't run out of water especially during the summer period in this corridor you see a timeline of James Watt's life um, he actually died in 1819 but his legacy lives on through his inventions um, and the things that he helped to create which still have a lasting effect today in Britain shortly I'm about to go into his workshop where you can see obviously some of his works and so on but behind me you have a brief history about the workshop which has been here since I believe which has been around since 1924 so let's go around and have a look now so guys this massive engine that you can see right here was constructed in 1903 by Burnley Ironworks as you can see it's probably one of the biggest steam engines that I've ever seen in my life so I've done the first part regarding steam engines let's go into the next bit behind me which is the exploring space exhibition let's have a look see what's in there planets stars etc let's go so guys uh, this long slender rocket hanging above us is actually called a scout and was developed by NASA back in the 1950s um, as a launch vehicle this here is a J2 rocket which was used uh, for the Apollo moon program um, back in the 20th century here is a fun fact it took five and yes five Formula One engines to lift this thing up absolutely incredible so behind me you've got this really really cool panoramic wall of obviously things such as asking questions like why we research I think it's important to know that humans as a species we've always been very cu curious and we've always explored things whether it's the, the oceans um, space um, the atmosphere anything like that we've always been very very curious uh, creatures and it's very interesting to see as I go around the museum this area that I'm in now this current area is known as the modern day technology section showing anything I think from 1750 up until the millennium so it should be interesting to see what we see here here you have a replica of one of the original horse-drawn carriages here we've got an Aveling and Porter tractor engine that was built in 1871 now if you're like me and you come from a family of lorry drivers you would be familiar with this lorry here um, a 1931 Foden for me personally it's very interesting because 
we now see these modern cars these modern supercars these lamborghinis ferraris etc but it just shows how things have developed over a period of time obviously this wasn't very fast but the, the, but the innovation and ideas and creativity would have come from something like this. So guys, uh, as I walk through the hallway, I just want to say that it is actually free to enter this museum. So you can do the Natural History Museum and the Science Museum both in one day. Both are free to enter, but you must, must, well, preferably you should book online, uh, but it is free to enter. So this exhibition that I'm on on the first floor is called Literally Who Am I? And it's pretty much about um, our identities and so on and why we look the way that we do in our features here you've got like a series of questions to answer yourself so how would you describe yourself uh, what are you afraid of what is home for you your favorite memory and so on I think I can press it no you can't <laughs> here we've got an example of the human fetus so this one here is at 15 weeks this one's at 20 weeks and this one here, I believe is at 32 weeks. So guys, I'm about to go into what they call the flight zone, which is on, I believe the third floor. So as you can tell, everything on this floor is dedicated to aviation and innovation through aviation. Nice rhyme there. Um, so yeah, let's just go and have a look. Uh, we're gonna see anything from uh, plane engines to um, plane wings and things like that. So let's go and have a look now. So we have here a Rolls-Royce engine from the Concorde from 1969. Um, well, there's two of them actually. So if you come up to the third floor, you'll see this cool jetliner behind me. This jet here uh, signifies the start of the current era of flying. So, as some of you know, historically flying, especially outside far of the UK and Europe, was only for rich people. 1958 was the first year that more people crossed the Atlantic by plane than by a ship. And as you can see, these kind of planes started to become very, very popular, known as the, 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 the rise of the economy class traveler. Today is a cool, cool reminder, but that's why I love this museum, because you see things in here from pretty much anything from sort of the last thousand years onwards, pretty much. Very, very cool. Here you can see an illustration of the development of planes as time's gone on. Going from a Wright Flyer in 1903, all the way down to modern day, down to the Boeing 747 and the Airbus A380 as well. Um, as you can see, the planes have got a lot bigger, um, a lot faster as well. If you're old enough, you will remember this iconic plane, the Concorde. So in front of me is called the Vickers Vimy from 1919. This is the aircraft in which John Alcock and Arthur Whitton Brown made the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic. So guys, in here is what they call the fly zone, where you can actually get a 360 simulator, sit inside of it and get a full experience of what it would be like to sit inside of a real Royal Air Force aircraft. So guys, I've stepped into the second floor and onto a place called Science City. So everything science related from 1550 until 1800. Uh, so let's have a look around and see what's here. This is called a turbo clock, uh, which is normally situated in church um, and other sizable buildings. Uh, they've been around for quite a long time. Uh, and the one cool thing about this one is that the actual, <laughs> the actual uh, clock is actually moving, uh, which is very, very cool. It is said that this clockmaker's museum that I'm in is said to be the oldest in the world. I'm not sure how true that is, whether it is or isn't, um, but there's quite a large collection of cool stuff in here. It's worth noting as well that a lot of these clocks were built between the 16, between 1600 and 1700, which was known as the golden age of clock making in Britain. So the whole point of this exhibition was to show how between 1550 and 1800, London went from being a very industrial city to grow and to become the capital and the economic heart of the United Kingdom. And you could say in Europe and definitely one of the world. Here we've come into the mathematics uh, section. It's amazing to think that with all the current technology, this is what a PC looked like many, many years ago. This also as well at one point was a computer. This part of the museum is called the information age or as they call it sometimes the age of information. So guys, here you see a variety of electronic goods that were 
obviously not used, they're not used now, but very popular when I was growing up. Uh, the Skybox, uh, you've got a phone there, which obviously isn't as tech savvy as now. You've got a, like a very square TV um, and many other things as well, which is very, very cool to see. Here we've got one of London's most iconic landmarks, the famous telephone box that everyone knows and sees. Um, we don't use them anymore really, but they are still around and will always be forever iconic. And yeah guys, I think this might be my favourite part of the museum. Um, as I walk around it, it's just really, really cool to see how our communication methods have changed and developed over time. Something 20 years ago, which seemed amazing, no longer is of significance, which is very, very, very interesting to see. So I've come to the medicines and community section of the museum. And as you can see, this has got bits and bobs dedicated to various things. So for example, one is COVID-19. We've got another one here uh, regarding leprosy. This one here uh, is talking sadly about uh, polio um, and essentially the symptoms and so on. This one here uh, is regarding smallpox. And this one here is regarding tuberculosis. If you watch Doctor Who, you would know exactly who this is or what this is. That is it guys for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've got many, many more videos coming for you very, very soon. In the meantime, don't forget to check out some other videos that I've done at various locations. But in the meantime, thank you so much. And don't forget, let's go.